weight shift. So if we have an object and it's sitting on a pair of scales, then the scale that's closest uh, to the center of gravity is going to support uh, more weight. So we see that in this um, lower illustration uh, that if the center of gravity is closer to the scale on uh, screen left, then uh, that scale is bearing more of the weight compared to the uh, scale on the right. Of course, if the object's evenly uh, between the two, then they, they evenly support the weight. And uh, if the object happens to be um, uh, shaped so that um, the center of gravity happens to be located closer to one side than to the other side, then uh, again, we have the same situation that there's more weight uh, on that side. Now, uh, this is uh, important because it applies to uh, characters. So if we have a character like uh, Alex the Lion here and uh, his pose happens to be such that his center of gravity is uh, closer to his screen left foot, then um, that center of gravity being closer uh, to that foot means the center of pressure will be closer to that foot. So as we see in this um, uh, drawing, uh, we have that same uh, situation. And so uh, the foot or the leg that uh, is on the side where the uh, center of gravity is located is going to bear uh, more weight. Now, uh, we can measure this uh, directly by using uh, force plates. These are essentially like digital bathroom scales and we can connect these to a computer and um, uh, collect data, so make a graph uh, and just see the pose, the, uh, say the weight uh, for various poses. And uh, what's surprising is the uh, very large and rapid variations of, uh, of weight uh, with relatively uh, simple uh, basic poses. So uh, let's just look at a recording uh, illustrating this. So if you look in the, in the back, you see the weight on each um, foot and uh, here it goes uh, first being more or less evenly divided and then very significant difference uh, one foot to the other and then more or less evenly divided again. Um, let's look at another example of this. So just watch the numbers and the graph as the weight is varying in these different poses. Uh, let's just look at one more. Okay. So you see I'm not uh, doing anything uh, dramatic there and yet uh, there's uh, more than a two to one difference, sometimes three to one uh, in the weight on each foot. Now, to understand what's happening here, uh, let's start out with a pose in which I have uh, basically the same amount of weight on each foot. In this case, the center of gravity is located right in the middle, so the center of pressure is uh, equal, equal distance between uh, the two feet. Now, uh, if I shift my center of gravity by just two inches, then in this case, the, um, uh, there's twice as much weight on the screen left foot compared to the screen right foot, even with just that simple uh, small uh, shift in the center of gravity. And here I've uh, shifted it uh, just one more inch, and so uh, now, the uh, center of gravity 
uh, is such that the center of pressure is uh, three inches from one foot and nine inches from the other foot. And in this case, the uh, ratio of uh, weight is uh, three to one. So uh, three times as much weight on uh, one foot than the, than the other. And you see uh, here uh, how that is affecting my, uh, my pose. Now, of course, if I continued and uh, put the center of gravity so that it was uh, completely over one foot, then I could actually just uh, have no weight on the uh, opposite leg, in which case I could even just stand on one foot. Now, uh, there's often a very direct relationship between the uh, weight uh, shift from leg to leg and the uh, resulting pose. So the classic example is the contrapposta pose. So we see the, the angles of the hips and shoulders. Uh, and in the contrapposta pose, the uh, weight shift uh, is such that the uh, weight bearing side the uh, hips go up on that side and the shoulders uh, go down on that side. The, the side that's carrying less weight, uh, the hip tends to go down and the shoulders tend to rise. Uh, Glenn Vilpu, a um, great uh, teacher, um, puts this very nicely. He says, uh, by simply shifting the weight to one leg, we automatically create a curve in the torso as we generally shift the rest of the torso to compensate. The shifting doesn't stop there, but extends to the neck and the head going up, which tends to move in the opposite direction again. So we get uh, the very distinctive um, line of action in the entire pose resulting from this, uh, this weight shift. Now, in uh, animation, this uh, is very important because uh, if you don't reflect properly uh, weight shift, uh, then it deadens the, uh, the look of the uh, character's um, motions. Uh, and it's one of the most common um, errors uh, in the uh, work of uh, beginners. So a good animator will be uh, always thinking about what's happening with the entire body. So even say in a shot like uh, this where we're only seeing the upper body uh, really um, an animator needs to be thinking about what the entire body is doing and uh, what weight shift uh, occurs because that, that affects the entire pose. So in uh, summary, uh, weight will shift to one side when the center of gravity shifts over to that side. Um, shifting the center of gravity by just a few inches for a, a average character can actually result in rather large uh, weight shift. Um, you saw in uh, those uh, poses, I was shifting um, over a hundred pounds of weight uh, with uh, relatively simple um, changes of pose. Um, weight shift is uh, reflected in the character's pose, uh, not just in the in the legs, but also in the upper body, all the way uh, through the, uh, the neck and the head. And uh, one example is the, the contrapposta pose, the hip is raised on the weight bearing side while the shoulder uh, drops on that side. Of course, not every pose is uh, contrapposta, but um, it's a classic example illustrating uh, weight shift. So hope that was uh, clear and um, now you see how important uh, center of gravity, line of gravity, center of pressures uh, to all of these topics. So see you next time.